What's up, queens? Happy Friday. Happy Monday. Whatever day you're watching this, you already know the deal. My name is Brittany Jones from She Abundantly at SheAbundantly.com. And I want to welcome you back to this amazing series. Did I say amazing? Because I meant it. Sure did. Amazing series called Tips on How to Win at Sex. Yes. Yes. And if you are just joining me on this amazing series called Tips on How to Win at Sex, let me brief you or give you a short synopsis of what I am talking about here. Okay, you know, when you hear that, you may be thinking actual bedroom tips to, 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 to do to do and, you know, mm -hmm. now we ain't talking about that. <laughs> We're talking about sexual integrity because the best way or the only way to win at sex is if you use how it was created to be used is if you be honest with your body sex is an act of commitment on top of so many other things and when you have sex with someone what you're saying is I am committed to you but reality is you did not commit to them with your entire life so guess what when you have sex with somebody you are lying to them you are not being honest you're not operating in integrity and sexual integrity is being honest with your body listen quick synopsis quickly okay and so that is the goal. That's the only way you can win at sex is if you use it how God created it to be used, okay? Which is within a, a beautiful marriage, a union between a man and a woman, husband and wife, to the glory of him. And if you are still rocking with me, let me just say, clap it up for yourself. Because you are on this journey. That means you are a thirsty for knowledge. That means you are thirsty for companionship, for community, for help in this area. And let me tell you, queen, God is rooting for you. God wants you to get everything that you desire. He wants you to know everything you need to know about sex, about love, sex, relationships, so that you can live your best life. Listen, I always say the best sex that you and I will ever have is sex with our spouses and in the marriage that God ordained and the house that he gave us both, you know what I'm saying, or the union, and in the marriage bed that God said is undefiled. That's the best sex you ever had. Any sex outside of that is cheap sex. It ain't even worth it. And so today's tip is this. See sex for what it really is. Yeah. See sex for what it really is. I think that is the... Shoo. I always say something is the main struggle. One of the main struggles when it comes to sex. Because here's the thing. Every woman has a view about sex. Every woman has her own belief system when it comes to sex. Okay. So that means you have something made up in your mind and in your heart concerning sex and how you act, how you do relationships with a man or, you know, even with women. You know what I'm saying? Like homosexual relationships, all, all of that. OK, that's tied to a view that you have about sex. And let me say this. Most of our views are not true. They're not coming from God, because here's the thing. We've let society, we've let the world tell us the meaning or the function of sex where what what belief do you have that came from god about sex do a little inventory doop, doop, boop, 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 boop. what do i know what what am i operating in or what am i doing based off of god's truth about sex does that make sense okay most of us are operated or are using sex based on our own belief something that society has taught us something that our moms and dads has taught us something that pornography has taught us something that our friends boyfriends has taught us about sex and so we've been using it based off of that but reality is society people they didn't create sex okay I think that is that is the foundation when it comes to wanting to know more about sex and when it comes to living a life of sexual integrity or you know winning at sex you got to establish the fact that God created sex okay he created it so that means he knows everything about it that means he knows the intricate details of it that means when you create something you also create the boundaries or the law around it listen queen I'm, I'm coming for you today okay in a good way because I'm encouraged, but I'm also on fire, in a sense, in my heart. Because I see this in my life. Oh, my goodness. It has been the mindset when it comes to sex. That is the driving force to either use sex in the right way or abuse it. Okay? 
one of the main struggles that I've had over this walk of living a life of sexual integrity before I even decided to give my body to God, even after, was keeping a right view of sex. Okay, when you see a woman or a young woman struggling to give her body to God or or using sex however she wants to, it's because she does not have the right right belief about sex. Let me show you the power of knowledge. Look at this. This is a little nice tall glass of water. Yes, queen. Yes. Okay. You know, it look good. It quenched your thirst. All that good stuff. But how about this? If you knew, because you know, you drink water because it's good for your body and all that stuff, right? Let's say I put a, a, a drop of poison in this water. Now, this is an old little, this might be poison because this is an old bottle of <laughs> hot sauce. Let's say I put a drop of, oh, a couple of drops of, of poison in the water. Hmm. If you knew that a couple of drops of poison was put in this, this water, this good old glass of water, would you drink it? Hmm, hmm, hmm. If you knew, would you drink it? Listen, Queen, I hope you said no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you said no, because you know if you drink the water, you die. Because even the littlest drop of poison can kill a whole body. This is the mindset that I desire, that God desires for every young woman to have concerning sex. When you know the truth about sex, use it in the right way. Or when you know the truth about sex, no longer abuse it. And misuse it so that's what we're going to establish today we about to kill some of these wrong beliefs that we have about sex right and though some of the most common beliefs that we have about sex is this you use sex tell me if I'm telling the truth now come on let's let's be honest with ourselves today because I've done all of these things okay all of it you think that's how you can get a man sex if I have sex with him, then I can secure him. I can get a man. I can get him to like me. I can get him to love me. I can get him to stay with me. And, and I, can, I can keep him if I have sex with him. That's a belief. I guarantee you. That's a belief that you have about sex. Mm -hmm. Where did that belief come from, though? Did it come from God, the one who created sex? Did he say, this is how you use sex? to get and keep a man. The average person who don't even read the Bible would, would probably say no, because you know that don't even sound like God's character. You know that came from your own selfish desires, that came from society, that came from how culture or women are using sex, so you just follow along with what everybody else is doing. But let me tell you this, and listen, this ain't nothing, I ain't bashing nobody because I'm in this category. These are the common views that we have about sex, and I, queen, before I came into the knowledge of stuff, that was me all day. I was the one, not always, but I was the one that seduced the young man. I was the one who initiated sex. So let, me, let me show you. Let me tell you this. I'm going to read my notes here. <laughs> this shows that a man is an idol in your life. When you use sex to try to get and keep a man, it's showing that you are using or it's showing that you are making a guy an idol in your life because you are disobeying God's word to get that man. Okay, when God created sex um, for a husband and wife within a committed marriage, that is, and using it outside of that context, that is disobeying God to get that man. So basically, you are putting this man before God. You are trying to use sex, or you are using sex, to try to control the will of of another person or the decisions of another person. If I do this, if I put it down right, if I flip it, if I do all the stuff that porn, a porn star does, then I can, he gonna stay with me. Oh yes, he, he gonna never go to another girl. That, you know what that's called? And I had to learn this. That's called manipulation. To try to control somebody else to get what you want. Another word for that is witchcraft. Y'all, I've been learning a lot about witchcraft. That's what witches do. Hmm? And which, witchcraft is not good. God gives everybody free will to choose him or not choose him. And you trying to sway somebody to choose you, manipulate, trick somebody into choosing you. That's not the will of God. That's not God's heart. 
That's the, that is the, the way of the enemy. That is the devil, how he operates. He tries to swindle you, come over your will and trick you and deceive you. That's deception. So yes, a lot. So yes, that is one of the false beliefs that we have about sex. You use sex to get and keep a man. Let's go to the another, the next uh, false belief. You think you have to have sex to please a man. Another false belief. Let me tell you, I've, I've created in messages and I have a video about this. My aspiration growing up as a young woman, because I got hooked on pornography very young and I thought I was supposed to use my body how those porn stars were doing it. You know what I'm saying? To, to please a man. My aspirations was to be the best man pleaser. To me, meaning to be the best person at doing certain sexual acts. Okay? Because I thought you were supposed to use sex to just please a man. Because that's what they was doing in the porn videos. In the end of the video, all you see is a man being pleased. So in my mind, in my heart, I equated sex with, oh, He's pleased. He's doing this. So I'm supposed to use sex in that way. Say yes, because you know that is a belief in your heart. It travels from your mind when you see it and down it travels to your heart. Your mind is your conscious mind. Your heart is your subconscious mind. What you really believe about yourself. And now you've just been operating and using sex in that way. Yep. That's a false belief. Because where did God say that you are supposed to use sex to please a man? Hmm. And again, let me show you. Let me tell you this again. This shows that a man is your idol because you would rather please a man over pleasing God. God was the one who created sex in the first place. Not a man. Not a man. Here's the thing. God created you. You are his possession. You are his, his creation. And there's a truth that he speaks out. Your body is the Lord's. If you've given your body to God, you know, so if you said, Lord, be my Lord and Savior, guess what? Your body is the Lord's now. So your body is not a man's. You feel me? Let me say that again. Your body is not a man's. He don't own your body. God owns your body. So guess what? We are to use our body to be in obedience or please God. And anything that God tells us to do with our body is beneficial. It ain't just beneficial to a person or a man. It's beneficial to us. It's beneficial to the community, to our families, to everybody around us. Okay. Your body is the property of God, not a man. A man can only engage with your body within the law or boundaries of God's word. Anything outside of that is illegal, a crime, an offense, a flagrant foul. Okay. So when a man's having sex with you, laying you down and all that stuff, he is disobeying God. He is disobeying God. He is, he is, he might as well take a bat to your body because that's what he's doing to your body. He's abusing your body for his own selfish pleasure just so he can have an orgasm and do what they do on the porn videos. Yes, because I know in these relationships, guys be asking girls, can I do that to you? He's using your body. Oh, God, can I say it? Mm. It's just a sperm container. That's the best way I could think about it, because I, I wanted to say something else. Just, just a place where he can deposit his seed or his sperm. And let me tell you, when a man, when a man doesn't truly love you, doesn't really know the, the value of your body, or the God who created your body and how beautiful it is. Let me tell you, when a man releases something onto you, that's not a good thing. That's more of like a dumping and saying, ugh, on to the next. I'm releasing my, my waste onto you. Because you know what, what it is, when, it, when it's illegal, that's, that's not something that's good for your body. It's a waste. He might as well be peeing on you. I, I, I pray that you hear what I'm trying to say here. You are just a way for him to get off. Because I don't know if you've, you've ever experienced this. Sex outside of God's creation, I've experienced it multiple times, okay? 
multiple times. Holy Spirit, help me. After I'm done, after I've orgasmed, I feel a great disdain for what just happened. I guarantee you that guy's feeling a great disdain. He may be laying there with you. He, he may still be in the house with you, but I bet you he feels a great disdain. He don't really love and respect you like he should because he's not in the he's not in in God's word or he doesn't have the heart of God for you because he's illegally engaging with your body. He's illegally engaging in the sexual act with you. Anything that you do outside of God's law, outside of God's will, which is illegal, you don't have a proper respect for it. When you disobey the law, when somebody breaks into your house, they don't have a respect for your house. They don't have a respect for your possessions. They just trying to get what they want in the moment. Same with the act of sex. When it's illegal outside of God's will, same with the act of sex. Queen, I'm telling you, he's just getting off on you. Literally. <laughs> okay. So the, the next false belief that we have is you think that sex is pleasurable and it's good for you. Like you are using sex or, you know, because you think it's just, it's just pleasurable. Okay. Let me, let, let's reconsider the story of Eve. I always go back to Eve because there's so much to learn from Eve. When Eve in the, in the garden of Eden. Okay. Let me, let me say this scripture. All scripture is good. It's useful for teaching, encouraging, correcting, instructing for pe uh, people in righteousness, how to know God, how to live for God, um, to know ourselves, to know the, how the world functions and operates. Okay. And so in the story of Adam and Eve, um, Eve was the first that was deceived into eating a piece of fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is all in Genesis. Go uh, chapter start in one, but go at chapter three. OK, when he when she was uh, deceived by the enemy and basically he was like, did God really say don't eat this fruit? And she was like, yeah, God said don't eat it or else you will die. You know what I'm saying? You will die. And he was like, yo, this you ain't going to die. This this fruit is good. Look at it. It's, it's good. You, you're going to get wisdom from this fruit. He tricked her into thinking that the fruit was just pleasurable, that I'm going to get all this good stuff from the fruit. And this is the same thing that he does with us with sex, because guess what? Yeah. Anybody who has had sex or has, has had pleasure from sex knows that it feels good. That's that's without question. That's God all day long. OK, he puts every good thing in his good works in his good creations. But sex is not just pleasurable. What Eve didn't realize was that God's word stands true. Before the act, during the act, and after the act. If God says that you're going to die from this fruit, then guess what? You're going to die. I don't care if it's pleasurable or not. I don't care if you eat it and it is pleasurable. Because I said it, because his law or his word says it, then guess what? It's going to happen. This is one of the hardest lessons I've had to learn in life. And let me just say I'm still learning. I'm still practicing this thing. You reap what you sow. It's called action and consequence or the consequences of an action. I had to learn that, oh, if I touch fire, I will get burned. There's nobody on earth who touches fire and does not get burned. Now, some people may not feel it because they may not have sensories or, you know, they may be desensitized in certain parts of their body from a defect or whatever. But guess what? It still burns their flesh. Even if you are not sensitized to the effects of sex, guess what? The truth about sex or what happens when you have illegal sex is still happening in your life, queen. I'm coming for these demons that's been lying to you. You wonder why I'm coming hard today? Listen, because I want you to live your best life. I want you and I to have the best sex life possible. And the only way we can do that is honoring God with our bodies, using sex how it is created to be used. And I'm coming for these lies, okay? Sex is not just pleasurable. If God says, honor me with your body, if God says, wait to have sex until you are married, he says it for great reason. If he only... Um, created sex for a husband and a wife It's for great reason It's for great reason We're going to talk a little bit about that too Okay You know what I'm saying But she fell for the trick Because she thought that the fruit was just for pleasure Just like we think sex is just for pleasure It ain't That's one of the main tricks Let me tell you That I have to combat When I'm thinking about sex I, I have to fight to remember The true intent of sex Because you get caught up in the pleasure Mm -hmm. For those who, who struggle with masturbation or think masturbation 
is just something for pleasure. No, no, no. No, no, no. You, you get caught up in that. But sex is so much more than that. Here's another false belief that we have about sex. You think that's how you get money. We have made professions around sex to get money, especially as women, because women, we need to be taken care of. We need to know that the bag is secure. And so in our mind, we made up, we have decided that, yes, sex is something to be used to get money because it's readily available. You know what I'm saying? All I got to do is do, 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 and he'll give me the cash. When reality is, God did not create our bodies. It goes back to those other reasons. God did not create our bodies um, as a way of exchange like that. We are, we are not a product. We are a whole human being with a spirit with emotions and, and thoughts and feelings and a body that is so valuable, made in the image of the true and living God. God, okay? God. We're not an inanimate object to be sold, to be had, toyed with, sold to this man and that man and that man or sold to this company. That's not our bodies. Our bodies are here to serve God. It is here to make God known. Mm, queen, hear my, hear God's heart for you and also for the intent of sex. Let me read this scripture to show you this. Because while we're thinking or while we're using sex to get money, we're using it in an illegal way. God didn't create sex to be used that way. So let me share this with you. Proverbs 1, um, 10 through 19. I'm going to read it quickly, but I want to focus on verse 19. I got to read around it so you can get it. This is a a man talking to his son, giving him wisdom. He says, my son, and this applies to daughters too. My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie and wait for innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Uh Uh-huh. Let's cast lots with us or cast lots with us. Cast lots with us. We will all share the loot. Get that money. But son, listen, their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. Queen. When you use sex illegally outside of God's creation for it, and not not just for sex, but anything illegal, you may get it. You may get that money. Clap it. Get that money. Uh, You may get it. But it says, hear me. God's word is true and it stands true no matter what. Such are the path of all those who go after ill gotten gain. It will take your life from you. Okay. Now, that may be a physical death. Yep, so many people die. Absolutely. That may be something to, um, emotional, spiritual. Something is going to die. What life means basically is something that's growing, something that's producing, something that is alive, vital. You know what I'm saying? And so going after ill-gotten gain, illegal sex, something's going to die because of that. Mm-hmm. It takes away your ability to go forward in life. It takes away the blessings of God. What a blessing is, is simply to go forward, to progress, to um, advance in certain areas of your life. And true blessings only come from God. Okay, it's a trick of the enemy. Let me tell you to think that blessings come from sinful behaviors. It's a trick of the enemy because it looks like you got what you wanted. Listen, in this story, they got the loot. (laughs) They got the money. Not realizing that there's a spiritual law behind everything that we do. Everything that we do. And so you may get the money, but something's dying in between time. Something's dying behind that. And then if it ain't in your life, guess what? It's going to be in your baby's lives. Mm-hmm. Their respect for you. Their value for their bodies. Your value for your body. Dead. Because you getting this money, you ain't realizing that you don't even value your own body. You don't even value what God has put in your body because if you did, you wouldn't be using your body uh, to get money. You wouldn't be prostituting yourself off like that to get money, okay? Mm -hmm. That didn't work for you. Proverbs 10 and 2 says, Ill-gotten treasures have no lasting value, but righteousness delivers from death. Hmm? So basically, listen, queen, 
You want to use sex, you know, you, you want life. You want to be delivered from death. Use sex how it is created to be used. So nothing got to die in your life. Because people who use illegal sex, let me tell you one of the main things that die. The relationship. Tell me if I'm lying. <laughs> tell me if I'm lying. I know it. Dead, dead, dead. Relationships dead. Marriages dead because it was based off. Just give it time. Give it some time. Oh, I know it. I've seen it. Queens get married five, seven, ten years later, they divorce. Twenty years later, they divorce because it was all built on a lie from the get go. Because they use sex in the wrong way. God's word does not lie. <laughs> Listen, Queen, God's word does not lie. I pray that you hear God's voice, girl. OK, let me go through what sex is meant to be used for. And then we go call it a day. So those were the lies that we believed about sex. What is sex meant to be used for? What is the intention, the true intention of sex? Number one, to worship God. First Corinthians chapter six talks about when you sin sexually, you sin against your entire body. That is physical body, your soul, your emotions, mind, will, and the spirit man of you. Okay, sex is a form of worship. When you have sex with someone, not only do your bodies come together, your souls come together, but your spirit come together. And that is a way or a pathway to a spiritual being. And either it's God or it's the devil or it's a demon. There's no in between. This is why you don't play with sex, because sex is literally a form of worship. I, when I learned this, I made a decision. No, 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 no. Any sex I'll have, I want God's spirit to be in there. I don't want no demons in my sex. I don't want no spirit that is not like God because wherever the devil plays, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, boo, and destroy. And guess what? In, in illegal sex, that's called demonic sex. That is an open door for demons to come into your life to kill, steal, and destroy. This is why you depress. This is why you feel like your self-esteem is so low. This is why you crying over a man right now because he cheating or because he off with some other woman. Because that was an open door to destroy you. And that person too, don't get it twisted. The man ain't going scot-free. OK, the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy both. Him. He, the enemy hates humans, man or woman. But I'm talking to you, queen. OK, so sex is meant to worship God. That's what sex is meant for. Sex is also meant to bring two together as one for for a man and a woman to be unified or to be one. Just like God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. And let me tell you, in John 17, 20 through 23, Jesus is praying to God the Father while he was here on earth. And his, what he was saying was, God, let them be one. Let the church or let the people of God be unified and be one so that the world may know that you, God, sent me, Jesus. So that the world may know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So that the world may know that God loves people. This is in scripture. Sex is meant to unify a, a, a couple, a man, a husband, and a wife. So that they may know God. So that they may know God. Because this dying world, let me tell you, abortion, suicide, all the evil, murder, they need to know God. And I, I already decided and declared, let me encourage you to do the same thing, queen. Make a decision that if you're going to have sex, it's going to be sex that worships God. And it's going to be sex that God, that people can see, glean from. Mm -hmm. Or a, a sex that people can know God through. I want, I want my sex to be so good, to be so holy, to be so legal, to be so right before God that when people get in my presence, okay, they be like, what's going on with you? I see a light. There's a, I'm, I'm blinded. There's a light coming from you. I want people to know God through my sex. I want people to know God through my sex, okay? Okay? Talk about good sex. Listen, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Sex is meant to be an expression of commitment, okay? Listen, because you are one or you are being unified, that is commitment. What God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are is a unified <laughs> being. They are God, three separate persons, but one God. They are committed to one another. They ain't never leaving each other, okay? Sex is an expression of that commitment. The fact that we are married, the fact that I've committed my life before to you, before God and before man, 
and sex is an expression of that, ain't nothing, is this beautiful? Ain't nothing greater. Oh my goodness. My sex life is, is, is a, a reflection of God's commitment within the Trinity and with his people. Listen, queen. Listen, queen. Okay, what else is sex meant, to, uh, meant for? Sex is meant to know someone deeply and intimately. Basically, what that means is to know someone intimately. When sex was described in the Bible in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it describes when Adam had sex with his wife. It says Adam knew his wife. That word knew literally means to know intimately or deeply. Sex is meant to open the hearts of both involved so that both can see each other like deeply and to perceive each other from beginning to end. Listen, when when God's spirit dwells within people, only then can we know God's heart and he truly knows our heart because we let him in. Sex is the same way. Sex is a reflection of God's of 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 God, the father, God, the son and God, the Holy Spirit. OK. Follow me, queen, follow me. And so when you when you use sex, how it is created, it is a way to know that person intimately and deeply. The thing is, all this illegal sex. Let me tell you, queen. You don't really know that person like you think you do. You may know what their body looks like, but you don't know them because you can't. God blocks it. You can't know his true heart for you or, or him knowing you. This is why a lot of times when you have a sex with old dude, you feel like you don't, you, he don't really know you because he just, he just wants what he wants. But he don't know your favorite color. He don't know your dreams and goals, nor does he may not even care. He can't perceive the, the thoughts of you. Listen. Or let me say, perceive the, the depths of you. Me talking to a married couple who's been married for 15 years, how I, I hear the man tell me things, how God gives him revelation about his wife, things that she never spoke out of her mouth. But God opened up the door for him to see her intimately. Only God can do that. And only God will do that in, in legal sex or within sex that is under God's covering that is um, in God's will or within his word. Sex that is submitted to God, to people who worship God truly within heart and not just out here banging just because they want to bang. You know what I'm saying? That's an old word. I ain't used that in a long time. But he has an open door to her heart because they're using sex how it is created to be used. So that way they can, be, they can know each other intimately, thoroughly from beginning to end. If I'm going to have sex, I want to be known deeply. I want you to see inside my soul and you tell me about me. I don't want you to just know my body, but know my heart. Listen, because within intimacy, and let me, listen, my, where, where is that? Where is that? I may, I may have to have a part two to this. Because of intimacy, pick this book up because this explains this, okay? Uh, sex and a Single Girl by Dr. Julie Slatery. Because of intimacy or within intimacy, there is safety and vulnerability. Because you know my heart, I feel safe. Safe is a place where there is no harm, hurt, or danger. And so when you feel safe, you feel like you can be your best and most authentic self. A lot of people who are having sex right now who are somebody who ain't their husband, with somebody who's not their husband, y'all don't feel safe. You feel like at any moment he can cheat or he can leave and walk out on you. Tell me if I'm lying. There is a study, stats, listen, stats, I love stats because they don't lie. They just show you the truth. And these are people coming from people's mouths. Studies show that people who are married trust their partner more than people who are cohabitating or living together. The percentage, the percentages of people when they ask the question, do you feel safe with your partner? Do you trust your partner? Married people, more married people say yes than people who are uh, living together and having illegal sex. Okay. Because you don't feel safe. There is no safety in illegal sex. There is, And when you don't feel safe, you're not going to open up your heart completely to that person. So that means there is no vulnerability in, in illegal sex. And so basically you won't be deeply known. Let me recap. Sex is meant to worship God, to be unified or to become one with the person um, as an expression of commitment or to be deeply known by that person and by God. Let me throw that in there. To open up your heart to God and your partner and your spouse. Let me say that. Sex is meant to reproduce. Sex is meant to reproduce. 
to have children. That is a common thing. And it's crazy because when people be getting pregnant, you know, I had, let me, let me not throw people underneath no bus because I was that girl too. But people be getting shocked when they get pregnant. That's one of the intents for sex is to reproduce. So here's the thing. If you ain't ready to be a mother or father, then don't have sex. That's, that's simple, right? But it's, it's something that we struggle with because now, you know, oh, I want the pleasure of sex, but I don't want the, I don't want the real meaning behind sex. I don't want the true intent and people getting abortions out here and killing these beautiful babies. Don't do that. And uh, the last thing that I'm going to share today, because let me tell you, sex is so huge and big. I just, listen, this is just icing on just a little bit of knowledge about sex. Who can understand all the beauty of it? Shoot. I would love to, but I ain't got. Sex is meant to be a celebration of the union, the union with God and the union with your spouse. This is something that God showed me. Oh, Quinn, if you rocking with me for 40 minutes, then you good. This is something that God showed me. Mm. One of the reasons cause I always thought, what what is the thing about orgasms? They feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. But why? Why do people have orgasms? Like, I know, of course, the exchange of, of semen so that people can get, you know, a woman can get pregnant. But why the pleasure behind it? You know what God revealed to me? And this is why he's so good. I put it in there as a way of celebration. Joy. There's, there is celebration or celebration is, should be joyful. It should be pleasurable. Hmm. And so when you have an orgasm, it's my way of helping you to celebrate that beautiful union before God, before him and with, within, um, before each other. Mm. Sex is meant to be a celebration. But here's the thing. If you have a sex outside of God's will, that's illegal sex. That's not a celebration. That's more like a mourning, like a mourning of death. That ain't no celebration. That ain't life given. That's that's deadly. Listen, all those things I just said, those are the true intent or the true meanings by sex behind sex. Did you find anything in there that says sex is meant is used is supposed to be used to get a man, keep a man, please a man, um, used to get money or used to to get your nails done, your hair done to to get a bomb place, an apartment to live in. God did not create sex to be used in that way. So here's the thing. If the reason why you are using sex cannot be found underneath God's word or within those reasons, then guess what? Don't use sex for that reason that you're thinking about using it. Because here's the thing, you will never get what you're looking for. If God, this is something you always remember. If God said one thing about sex and how it's supposed to be used within his marriage and you use it outside of his word, outside of that, that those boundaries, the very opposite will always happen. So guess what? You're having sex right now and you think that you're getting something from it, but you're really not. You're getting absolutely nothing from the true, from, from what sex can really give you from what sex or from the benefits of sex. You're not getting a dang thing. That's the percept or that's the deception of the enemy to make it seem like you're gaining something where you're really not. You may get the man for a moment. You may get the pleasure. But just like that apple, when, Adam, when Eve ate that apple, it felt good in a moment, but then death came right after. Oh, let me, let me not say that because that's another deception of the enemy because there's a delay in death. Oh, the decay began to happen. Don't get it wrong. Sin entered into the world, but because they didn't die right then and there or because, you know what I'm saying, you know, there was a delay in that. It makes you think that, oh, ain't nothing happening. Oh, I'm good. I'm getting what I want out of sex, but you're really not. And let me let me say this. Yeah, they they got kicked out of a garden. Let me say that they got kicked out of the garden, out of the immediate presence of God. So that was a form of death. Let me let me say that. That is the, the deception of the enemy. Oh, how do I know? Because I lived it. OK, I'm living it now. Even in with listen, that's why I'm changing my my eating. I, I've changed my eating. I fell off. Now I'm getting back on. Because you think you eating that Oreo today as if it ain't going to show up in a couple weeks or a month. Lies. 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 But I hope you are very encouraged. I hope from this day forward that you will fight to remember the true intent of sex. 
the true intention of sex. And if you're using it in a way that is not intended, then why use it? May God speak to your heart concerning the reasons why you're using sex, because there is a reason. May God renew your mind and give you strategy. Go on to tip one through 16 and help you with more strategy on how to use sex, um, how it's supposed to be used. Okay. May, may you have a, a mind and a heart to honor God with your body, period, because you want to live a life of integrity, whether you get married or not, it don't matter. If I'm, why would I use sex if I'm, be, if I'm going to be lying? I don't want to use it if it's a way of lying. You feel me? You see how my mind is going right then and there? So queen, be encouraged. Be encouraged as I am and come back next Friday as we have yet another tip on how to win at sex queen. Listen, that's all I got.